and if we get these companies to join us then i think we have some uh, much more much more clout uh, than we otherwise would the second point uh, yeah, one, two. <laughs> say again going for it now checking <laughs> Can everybody put their mics on mute? Please, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, the second point is uh, industry standard. Uh, this is uh, something that we, I think we all agree is needed. Uh, it's certainly something which I have used in attracting these new members. Uh, and it's the compelling argument, frankly. Everybody sees the everybody sees the need for um, an industry standard so uh, Kuba is going to reach out again please to all of you uh, those of you who are keen to join that committee to put together an industry standard it's it should be a, a general principles uh, standard a living document that develops as as the sector uh, develops and we really want to get that done as quickly as possible. We'll start work on that by the beginning of March because I want to try and get these other big managers in first so uh, clearly they will want to play a part in formulating that industry standard where that's one of the big attractions of, uh, of them joining. So please, Kuba will come out with uh, a note on this. If you're, if you're interested, you'd be very, very welcome to uh, participate. It should be a, um, a, an enjoyable process and really looking at what we want to try to uh, create out of this industry and what, what standards we want to uh, agree should govern our day-to-day -day practice. The, the third point I've got is um, one on communication. Um, I've been having quite a lot of discussion with Kuba uh, on this and there is a frustration I think sometimes um, on, on, in Cuba in insofar as he's reaching out to uh, all of the members as they as they currently are and sometimes not getting the feedback uh, that he needs and that we all need as an association we discussed how best to um, resolve this problem we think the best way to resolve this problem is by having a point of contact an intermanager point of contact in each of the companies uh, so that Kuba can reach out with requests to that point of contact uh, and disseminate or collect collate uh, comments from the membership but I, I do want to make the point and I think we, we all have to accept that intermanager is not Kuba it's us and we should also feel very free to communicate amongst ourselves. If any one of you want to ask, if I if I use the word, I, I, I don't mean it's a sort of a badge of pride or anything, but if any one of you want to ask one of the bigger, the big boys or the big girls about a certain issue, it may just be that Colombia has a report on GDPR or or or. Uh, cyber security and you are more than welcome to ask we should be more than welcome to ask each other through those points of contact to disseminate that information this association only works if we act like uh, associate members and co colleagues and are collegiate in that and you know the proof of the pudding will be in the eating um, but you know I for one and, and Columbia are here to uh, through our point of contact, which is Dirk, uh, to answer anything, anything that you may have, as long as it doesn't go against our competitiveness or give you a competitive advantage over us. But 99% of the stuff we produce, frankly, doesn't. Um, we are we are here, and we we will ask everybody to to abide by that and be good citizens of this association accordingly. And it's give and take, of course. Uh, so. Communication is a really important thing, I think. Yes, Cuba needs a point of contact, but those points of contact should be contacting and communicating with each other uh, going forward so that we actually uh, have a, a, a much better flow of communication, a much better flow of uh, in information, remembering that we're the association, the members of the, uh, of the association. The, the next point very quickly is um, what is our product? And, and some of these points stem from the conversations I've had with the likes of Synergy and OSM and Wallam uh, over the past few weeks. What is the product of this association? Is it sound bites? Uh, is it just to be a 
another pressure group at the IMO or these various other uh, regulatory and industry associations? Or, or is it something more than that? Is it uh, the sort of association that is inward looking as well as outward looking and shares the sort of information that I just talked about? Um, I think it's a bit of both, actually. I think we we sometimes lose sight of that. We, we're perhaps a little bit too keen to send Cuba off to attend various committees and, and represent the managers without looking inwardly as well and actually having a product for this association and producing something for the for the good of all, not just our full members, but also our associate members. We have we will have we have and we will have a, an incredible network once we build that up and, and more on that in a minute but uh let's look let's focus as much inwardly as outwardly it's not just to fly the the manager flag at every single committee uh that, that we may or may not need to be flying the flag it's also to serve each other as best we're able so i think uh looking at our product and perhaps Perhaps the points of contact can can discuss uh, with with Cuba what we think that that um, product should be as so as well as attending and flying the flag information sharing, uh, project sharing, um, and various working groups to be set up on particular uh, issues. Next point is publication. We talked uh, Cuba and myself talked to uh, elaborate about how we. Um, handle our PR better um, and, and we've got elaborate on board uh, now. Uh, Sean can't be here. Uh, I think Sean's not attending this particular uh, meeting because there's, there's, there's a conflict. But we also talked about how we can generate income for the association um, through uh, perhaps starting our own publication uh, dedicated to ship management, uh, not just external third party ship management but also uh, internal ship management and and uh, associate and for the benefit of associate members we've landed and and if anyone violently disagrees please let us know but we've landed on a solution whereby every quarter we will produce a supplement for SMI which is primarily dedicated for uh, ship management and the the members and associate members of this association. So there will be a, a, a supplement produced. It will have advertising. It will deal with specific core uh, interesting issues. Uh, it will be advertising particular associate members um, products. Uh, if if that that is what is felt that is is needed and wanted, but it will be a supplement dedicated solely to us as an association, and that way we will generate more income for the association. We'll be able to do more things with that income more effectively and beef up uh, the the inter manager uh, team. Perhaps have uh, you know Cuba times three or times four or whatever that we can actually um, cover more ground if we feel that's what needed. That's what's needed, or we can use the income in in other ways. So publications really really good, um, not just for associate members but also for the full members where we can advertise and and uh, uh, have real really good hard hitting articles on core issues relevant to uh, our business. Next point I've got is uh, IMO. Uh, we had a meeting with the um, Secretary General of the IMO, Kai Tak Lim, about a month and a half, two months ago. It was very well received. Kuba um, and I discussed yesterday that internally within the IMO, uh, Kai Tak Lim is now kicking some butt and saying engage with Intermanager more to everybody. Uh, he felt that that meeting was really, really good. Um, we're now setting up regular monthly, Kuba is going to set up regular monthly meetings with the IMO uh, so that we can raise issues of concern for us as managers and associate, uh, for the associate members with the IMO. So we need feedback on that. And and it is not a monopoly. This is not for Mark O'Neill to uh, and Cuba to have chats with the with the Secretary General every every month. It, we can rotate this as to who is the interface of uh, inter manager, where it's it's actually a very interesting uh, process to to engage with and interface with uh, that organisation. Quite frustrating sometimes, but but actually uh, uh, interesting nonetheless. And and as I said, it's not a monopoly, so uh, we can rotate this, um, but. But we have the opportunity. IMO welcome it. We should um, really um, take up that uh, that challenge. 
So more on that uh, to come out of the, the, the note of this meeting, but there will be monthly meetings with the IMO. Uh, these will be entered into our diary uh, and um, please feel free uh, to let us know what A, what to talk about and B, if, if you want to be the interface, uh, that's absolutely fine too. Next point is working groups and uh, I think we should, this should actually be, uh, the association should actually be, uh, this comes down to our product, uh, should actually be a working association and whilst we certainly don't want to have subcommittees and committees and on, on, on everything uh, under the sun in the same way perhaps as, as BIMCO and Intertanko etc, um, we should, there are certain core issues that I think we should tackle and devote time and effort and resources too. For instance, our GDPR team have said that they think that there are a number of GDPR issues that are absolutely relevant to managers and intermanager is the appropriate body to interface with the regulators in the EEA and other areas to bring up issues that are pertinent to all of us as managers and perhaps as uh, those who aren't and their associate members as well. Uh, so I know there was uh, in, in, in bygone years a, a GDPR a working group that was tried to be set up uh, within Intermanager and, and I think there was a uh, perhaps a lack of sufficient interest and, and one of the members ended up running the whole show and, and uh, actually sort of giving up a little bit on it because there was a lack of interest. There are some really big issues uh, that, that our department uh, our GDPR department has identified which are relevant to, to all managers, we need to get a working group together on that and perhaps on cyber security. And again, Cooper, if you could, um, if, if, there may be other issues out there. Those are certainly the ones that we've identified here within uh, here within Columbia. Um, if we can get a working group on and then we can report on this and produce a, a report that'd be really, really useful. And then, as I said, there may be other there may be other issues that, that people think are um, are, are relevant. If if people want a little bit more um, granularity on why we are concerned about GDPR for managers, I can certainly circulate a note from our from our team as to as to why they believe uh, inter managers should be interfacing with the regulators and dealing with these issues. That's not a problem at all. Next point I've got is um, associate members. Um, we want to grow our associate membership, uh, not just for um, uh, income for the association, but also I think it adds a richness and uh, a variety and also a, a really good networking platform in all directions. It's to our benefit that we get to know uh, the, 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 the wares and, and businesses of the associate members because we're often looking for a particular service and what we, our start point should be the associate members of, uh, of Intermanager wherever possible. So I think these presentations by associate members are really, really good at the end of these meetings. And um, uh, I think also the associate members who are putting on the presentations shouldn't at all uh, feel disrespected if people clock off after the official business of these uh, these meetings because they've got um, business uh, issues to attend to. These are recorded. A lot of the people are, are who can't make today's meeting will be uh, looking at the recording. So it really doesn't matter whether you've got an audience of 80 or five, uh, it will be viewed by all, hopefully, um, uh, after the meeting. So uh, no disrespect intended, but I think these these are really, really good and will, will encourage associate membership uh, to, to increase. So I think the presentations are a good thing. And I think Kuba, you said that they're, they're um, uh, you know, you've you've not been inundated, but you've 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 got bookings for the next four or five or six uh, uh, of these meetings already, which is a, which is a great thing. Um, just two final points, very very quickly. Uh, I think we all should also should be looking at management courses. Uh, this is this is part and parcel of um, not only income generation for the association, but also. Um, quality and standard. I think we th there are a number of courses on ship management. I think we need to identify the best ones and perhaps sponsor the best ones and develop the best ones so that we have a product and that ship management, this goes hand in hand with our uh, industry standard, that ship management isn't uh, 
uh, something that uh, one makes up as we go along, there is actually um, a, 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 a method and a professional method to the process and we will attract quality people into the business and into the industry further quality people uh, if we do that and i think we should we should we should have a look at that perhaps some, that's something that that that, that Cuba, uh, can think about and and maybe we can identify some courses and then come back to you with 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 our ideas uh and finally uh the, the issue of diary i i wasn't aware that that there used to be a diary for for Cuba um and for uh inter manager generally i think that would be really really useful to uh, resurrect insofar as we decide again as an association what we want uh kuba effectively to do and devote his time and efforts and the and the inter manager team which will hopefully grow um where there is a, a need for it to grow and i think that diary is really really useful because also we may if we know where he's intending to go then we also may have some input uh, uh that we want issues that we want to be raised at particular meetings that at the moment we don't um um and and i, and I talked to kuba about that start restarting the diary so sorry bit of a machine gun approach um but that gets everything off my chest that i that, that i wanted to um kuba back to you Thank you. Thank you. And I'm really sorry that I was in another meeting waiting for you guys and getting really nervous. Where are you? And that appeared to be me missing that. So uh, I should have started with the housekeeping rules, but Mark came uh, very nicely and, and uh, did his 15 minutes, which was actually 18. Now, if you guys want to comment or anything, put your hand up using the yellow button at the top. And then obviously I'll be a traffic warden and I will allow for that. We've got time because I allow something like 15 minutes for me to talk now on the housekeeping things before I go into the ITF item number four. So talking to Mark recently on several occasions, it became apparent that changes we have introduced recently, we probably lost some people. Uh, for those of you who have been with Intermanager for 10 years or 11 years, you would remember we used to have dispatches, weekly dispatches on Wednesday. And that they always started with what happened last week, what are we planning next week, and what is the uh, outlook for the further afield. And it wasn't just Cuba, Mark, it was your movements as well. So I need president, because we, president is representing intermanager. We've got Paddy very often representing us and myself. Now, this calendar has not disappeared. It's still on a website. It's called events. But I appreciate the fact that you are not necessarily daily on our website. So. I will recirculate the link where you can actually come and see, and it is something like a year in advance. Whenever we can schedule a year in advance, we do. So Mark, you would be probably not surprised now that uh, discussion, we to participated on Monday, meetings of uh, things like uh, London week, Shipping Week, uh, CMA and so on and so forth is already there. Uh, not necessarily with names, but we know that Intermanager needs to be represented. And Mark is spot on. Obviously, I'm waiting for feedback from you guys. You tell us where do you want Intermanager to be present and we will be present there, either through one of our members or through Paddy, myself or Mark. Um, so that's what I wanted to cover on this one. Uh, yes, this meeting is being recorded and uh, we are. this is the second meeting, so hopefully within the time I need to upload, because it takes some time with my internet, then it is uploading takes four hours last time it did. But once it's uploaded, it will be sent to you guys link and you can access and more importantly, share with your teams. Uh, I will definitely come back to you on action points of this meeting, especially on the contact points, because we are still missing that. OK, so I think that's on a housekeeping, not seeing any yellow flag from anybody so far. Uh, and it's 21 past, so I'll move now to my item ITF. So one of the issues, and it was a brilliant one, which sits very well with what Mark was saying, is that members are coming with an issue. And one of the members came and said, I've got a problem because ITF is bombarding us with crew being overdue. What other members do with that? So we went around, I had responses from some, and I sent them back to all of you, regardless whether you responded to not. And just to recap on that was basically that some of members were very proactive. So knowing that they've got a crew overdue and they have done everything they could, they reported that to ITF saying, okay, guys, we do have such and such a number of 
overdue crew, and this is what we are going to do, and this is what we plan. And ITF was very happy. And the other approach was whenever ITF then came to, uh, or was first to contact one of the members, members were reporting and saying, this is our plan. And that went very well, no problem whatsoever. Since that circulation, nobody came back and I had no further comments. So as far as intermanager and the relationship with ITF is concerned, we are buddies, we like each other, we work together on a lot of committees, and I don't think I've got anything to report to you. And whenever the, I believe uh, shopping floor has any reports, then I am disseminating them to you. The other thing was legal document. Um, thanks to the fact that intermanager is very actively participating in a vaccination committee, vaccination task force, but also COVID well-being committee industry, we are able to report back to you and listen to things. And ICS was preparing a very nice document, very interesting document. But when I read this document, I thought, oh, 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 oh. it's not necessarily representing third party ship management. So this document, um, ICS was requested to hold on for a second. Uh, I went back to all of you. I got comments from you which were circulated as well, and uh, it went back. I'm glad to report, I'm looking at the other screen now, that basically there was not a single flag raised by third party ship management. Looks like the document prepared by ICS, which definitely looks after the owner's um, business, uh, was also pretty well drafted, and third party ship managers did not have any issues with that. Uh, I, if you still, missed this yet or anything, just come back to me. I'm more than happy to recirculate that to you if you want to have a look or just go through your email box because it must be somewhere there. But to save your time, drop me a line. I'll send it back and then uh, you can see what's going on because this document will be circulated very soon uh, as an ICS document or maybe as a COVID well-being committee. Okay, so that's covering item number six. And one minute before my time ends, Captain Paddy McKnight will be reporting from IMO and actually introducing, because it became apparent and some of you did not know, then we do have a Captain Paddy McKnight who is in IMO for the last 10 years, making sure that your interests are very well guarded and reported back and so on. Paddy, over to you. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Kuba, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. A few words about my background before tackling the IMO. I was an officer in the UK's Navy, Royal Navy, in a career spanning 37 years, having trained essentially in maritime warfare. On leaving the Navy, I joined the Japanese Shipowners Association based in London and acted as their point of contact with countries of the European Union. Following that, I joined Intermanager in the role of IMO accredited representative. Now to the IMO, where I have represented your interests for the past 10 years, and I'll try to simplify the workings of the organisation, the HQ of which is based on the south bank of the River Thames in London, close to Lambeth Bridge. As you've heard from Mark, the IMO is headed by the Secretary General, currently a South Korean gentleman called Mr. Kitak Lim, who is in his second four-year and final permitted term of office. Under Mr. Lim, there are seven distinct divisions within IMO, and I'll describe them starting with the ones of least relevance to you. First, the Department for Member State Audit and Implementation Support. Second, the Technical Cooperation Division responsible for global technical programs, partnerships, and training institutes. Third is the conference division comprising two subdivisions. The first of these is that for documents, terminology, and translation into the three working languages, English, Spanish, and French. The other one looks after meeting services, interpretation, and translation in Arabic, Chinese and Russian. Chinese, worthy, worthy of note is that when member states are in attendance at IMO meetings, all six of these languages receive direct interpretation. Fourth on this list is the administrative division, 
responsible for activities such as publishing, catering, management accounting, also information and communications technology, plus various others. Finally, the three divisions of most interest to Intermanager are maritime safety, marine environment and legal affairs. Marine safety has three subdivisions under its wing, namely human element, marine technology and cargoes, also maritime security and facilitation, whilst the marine environment division comprises protective measures and implementation. The final division is that of legal affairs, which also incorporates external relations, public information services and a maritime knowledge centre. There are currently 174 member states, all of which have signed up to the IMO convention. Typically, an average of 100 member states attend each IMO meeting, together with approximately 40 non-governmental organisations or NGOs to use the acronym. That includes us, by the way. Attendance at, at major meetings such as the Maritime Safety Committee or the Marine Environment Protection Committee attract in the region of 1,000 delegates and the Assembly even more than that, while subcommittee numbers are somewhat less at a mere five or 600. As you well know, I attend the majority of IMO meetings of interest to Intermanager. Quite often, I do so alone and if anyone would like to join me at any meeting that holds particular appeal, this can easily be arranged, even for as little as half a day. So just let me know and I will be delighted to have you in our delegation. It will give you a better idea as to the complexity and difficulties encountered when member states try to negotiate from positions that are so often diametrically opposed. Dates of the various meetings are usually published on the Intermanager website, enabling you to forward plan. My email address is easy to remember, and it is paddy at intermanager.org. So just get in touch in advance of joining me. I would really love to have some company. Before finishing, I would like to pay tribute to our associate member SGS for their attendance at many sessions of the PPR subcommittee. They continue to field a strong team and participate in the working groups, particularly on ballast water management and also in helping to frame the guidelines for exhaust gas cleaning systems, as they are able to have a say on your behalf during working group technical discussions, and hence they can directly influence the outcome of the debate. I should also add that they assist with the content of my speaking notes on subjects such as these in plenary discussion, which lends greater authority to our interventions and further promotes the interest of Intermanager members. I think that's probably enough for now, but thank you for listening. Over to you, Kuba. Yep, thank you, Paddy. Thank you very much. We've got Rajesh, I see your hand. Uh, hi, Kuba. Uh, uh, good morning and good afternoon uh, uh, to everyone. As, uh, uh, Rajesh uh, from Campbell Shipping in Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, touch base regarding the ITF uh, point which Cuba mentioned. And uh, the, to be honest, I was one of the person who actually raised that point. Uh, I think uh, one of the uh, broader issues that we do have with ITF uh, is actually uh, their press releases, their media statements. Last year, if you recall, uh, ITF actually went out uh, to to the whole industry. They wanted to show, you know, that was a moment for them to show, you know, what they could. Uh, and they are banging the drums on behalf of the seafarers, of course. Uh, and uh, so they came out with a uh, press release that, yeah, you can stop working after finishing your contract, literally saying that you could, you know, stop working, uh, which the statement which they retracted later on. But ITF continue to send media statements, which obviously, you know, every seafarer reads it now. They continue to say statements like, you know, the seafarers have to get off the ship, or they have the right to get off the ships, and uh, uh, and the end of the contract. Now, which which they, it's not clear to me 
that when means is at the end of the contract, it is the contract that you have signed, or it is the MLC maximum of eleven months that you know you can you can come up. So because as a manager, you know you have two battles to fight. One is the owner, because you have to convince the owners to divert the ship. And once you pass that threshold, then you have the charters to deal with, whether they would and they throw you an unliability, unlimited liability, uh, you know, a clause saying that yes, you could do it, but anything, anything, uh, any delays or anything whatsoever would be, and and by, by bet you ninety nine percent they would find a reason that it happened because of your crew change. Uh, so so what I'm saying is that uh, the ITF is not doing good. to work with inter managers and other stakeholders to have the practicality of the challenges that is surrounding us by their press releases that is going out uh and i think uh, i know they have the liberty to write what they want to write but but and something that they can collaborate with the other stakeholders especially the uh, you know inter manager to see that 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 it does make sense we are with them to work Uh, seafarers uh, well being is our priority as well uh, and and i think uh, you know that that's something there should be a much better coordination in that aspect rajesh thank you for that indeed i have to admit that not, not always we are very happy sometimes we are being ambushed by itf who sends the message and then comes and coordinates that with us very recently we had a very similar situation with ayata when they send the message about and film about passports vaccination passports which have not been discussed with the industry at all and so on and so forth so i take it on board thank you yes i will work harder with itf to make sure that we are not being surprised by the uh, press releases or anything like that however the reality is that they can do whatever they like to do but obviously we can always uh, respond to that Mark, would you like to add anything from from your? Yeah, I, I I think that's a really good point. I I was um uh also extremely um annoyed uh when they came out with when the ITF came out with that because it was totally uncommercial and 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 didn't it was it was a knee jerk. It seemed to me that it was a knee jerk um response to a much more complicated issue. You know, we found we have fifteen thousand seafarers. We we found actually that that uh, most seafarers, as long as they were communicated with and 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 felt safe on board, were actually content with the way we handled this whole um, uh, pandemic. And uh, weren't you know there were other issues that were upsetting them, not the, the longevity of their time on board the vessels. Can't we get Steve? Is Steve Cotton, isn't it? Who's the Secretary General of? Uh, can't we get him on to the next? Uh, invite him to to give 15 minutes half an hour talk that we have a little debate with him maybe we dedicate one of these weekly sessions we we can have an an extra one or something with him on and we can all sort of raise our issues because i think if he understands where we're coming from uh, rather than just coming out sometimes w- with what appear to be nija then then we'll build up a relationship and i think that's important um but maybe get him on and um then he can hear what our issues are i think it's something like 95% of all crew are employed by crew managers and and crew managers are members of inter manager or should be um so you know it it's a, it's 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 something that he should be keen to do as well i take it as a action point for myself indeed i'll get in touch with him and uh, invite him yeah yeah sounds like a great plan Okay, Rajesh, could you put your hand down because it confuses me now? Then you want to. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Okay, not seeing anything yellow in front of me. I'm uh, moving on to another point, which is the vaccination update. So, um, Intermanager is part of the vaccination task force, and very recently also on the vaccination procedures. And uh, this subcommittee has given ourselves a very tough schedule, which is a um, Easter. we we will produce a draft procedures for vaccinating seafarers there is enormous amount of information which has to be digested prepared and it would not be possible for one organization to work so i'm delighted to report and we are working arm and arm with uh, ICS intertank or bimco and the others making sure that actually we are pulling resources to organize all of this once it's done rest assured this will come back to you and consulted and obviously i'm already consulting with a 
group of people who are very keen to be involved in that and, and then representing us. Uh, this is obviously a very emotional subject. We all becoming very expert on this because everybody lives in specific organization, country and everything. And uh, we are exposed to vaccination as we progress now with different countries and some of those countries claiming the best practice, which may not actually be the best practice in other places. But for me to tell you now is basically, rest assured, this work is progressing. I'm trying to keep you posted as much as I can. Although sometimes uh, there is a pressure on me not to disclose too much before we actually agree with some, some things. However, if you are very interested in something, you've got questions, and um, I am receiving questions, some very, very interesting from companies, uh, I basically passing questions from the seafarers. So we are able to answer those questions and then these companies are able to uh, put your seafarers at ease as well. There is a document being prepared and will be ready by 12th of March, so not many days to go, um, industry document explaining what the vaccination is. We are also working on shorter films and longer films because we appreciate the fact that nowadays people like small snippets on the YouTube or social media. And it is the, our target audience are seafarers at the moment. However, I'm looking at Dirk now and Dirk knows what I'm talking about. We are also trying to address um, office people, office staff. We are not forgetting about those who are actually managing seafarers. They need to be also reassured. Uh, they've got thousands of questions and obviously I'm, I'm I'm very keen to hear those questions as well. So please, if you've got them for me, I will then try. The interesting thing is that obviously 90% of us are asking the same question. Uh, so let's let's funnel them and, and have answers. Yeah, uh, can I just can I just ask one thing? What is Intermanager's position on vaccinations? Uh, you know, I think we <laughs> I think it's important we take a position, isn't it? Uh, we, we, you're talking about you got it, Mark. You, you answered that. So we've got two. We, there was a question went to the all members and members came back, and our position was basically to go for both, vaccinating on board and vaccinating at home, if possible. And a preferred way is Johnson and Johnson at the moment because it's a single shot. So in very very nutshell, this is what members told me that you would prefer. You wouldn't like to only vaccinate on board or only no. vaccinate. At home. No, it was going for that. And, and we are recommending as an association vaccination. We are encouraging vaccination because there's, yes. there, there are yeah. there are ethical issues involved in that. Uh, you know, certainly as a company, CSM, we're encouraging our seafarers yeah. to have the vaccination. But that it, it's I think it's important that we we make it very clear that that's our and apologies if we already have. Yeah, but I mean, we we've, as as Cuba said, we definitely didn't want to go uh, say either this way or that way our objective has to be we want to get all seafarers vaccinated as soon as possible whether this will be on board which has its own problems or before they join the ship at, at uh, so they're vaccinated being vaccinated at home um, and then the question is certainly also the availability of vaccines. Uh, we have said we recommend Johnson & Johnson because it's one-off vaccination. Because how, how are you going to vaccinate anybody on board if you need two vaccinations? It just doesn't work. So yeah, we are on, on to it, but there's still a little way to go. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'm one minute behind myself. so. Alex, over to you and Martin. Very good. So thank you for allowing us the last 15 to 20 minutes of the call. Um, just if I may, a brief introduction. So I'm Alex Anagnostis and the founder and president of Total Marine Solutions. We had the pleasure of joining Intermanager as an associate member last year, and I was honored to join the executive committee during the annual general meeting in November. So I'm joined today by Martin Gombrey, CEO of Marine Flock Sales and Production just outside of Gothenburg, Sweden. My company, TMS, has had the pleasure of representing Marine Flock in North America for the past 20 years. I actually left Royal Caribbean in 2000 to start TMS for that specific purpose, represent Marine Flock and help them broaden their market share as manufacturers of effective waste management systems. 
So last meeting, Christian of Mental Health Support System, our newest associate member, offered a great overview of how good mental health drives safer shipping. Our presentation today will carry that message forward as Martin will share details with you of a successful collaboration designed to improve by remove, eliminating the need for multiple systems on board, saving labor hours, allowing for training on one system designed to treat various waste streams, and offering the crew peace of mind and greater confidence in the operation and maintenance. Lastly, with the loss of in-person conferences, where it's been tradition for manufacturers to illustrate their innovations year over year, um, these tech talks, as I like to refer to them, help bridge that gap. So another successful pandemic pivot, which Intermanager should be really proud of. So Martin, the screen's all yours. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Cuba, for uh, having me. I'll start sharing my screen then. Hopefully this will work. All right, so thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, the trend for the last 20 plus year or so that I've been in the business has been that there is more regulations coming, more requirements from everywhere, uh, from authorities, from, from charterers. There is more technology coming, there is more equipment coming, but we don't see a trend of more crew on board, do we? So um, there's there's more equipment to maintain, there's more equipment to operate. Uh, so we have you know, given this thought and tried to uh, uh, reduce the amount of equipment by combining. And uh, what we talk about today is how we can combine water treatment for EGR, which is ex exhaust gas recirculation units and bilge water treatment units. So that is what my 10 minutes in the spotlight is all about. Uh, so EGR, exhaust gas recirculation, is one way to reduce NOx. NOx is a substance that's produced by the combustion and it will produce acid rain, it will produce eurofiltration. Uh, we have these algal blooms in the summer here in the Baltic, uh, partly caused by this. Um, so one way of reducing this NOx, which you need to do in the ECA areas, uh, North Sea, Baltic, North America from this year, uh, for new builds is to uh, reintroduce the exhaust gas into the engine and that way the NOx will be reduced. Um, so on the picture here you see uh, an add-on on a MAN engine where this exhaust gas valve is fitted. Uh, in order to recirculate the exhaust gas into the engine we need to uh, clean the exhaust gas and that's done by a, a scrubber, small scrubber. That's a closed loop but Due to condensation, this water will increase in volume, so it will bleed off to a bleed off tank. And this water needs to be treated by a water treatment unit. Uh, we're talking about for a, let's say a 20 megawatt engine, about 1.4 tons per hour in production. For LNG, it's, it's more. We're talking about, about 2.4, so that's about the range, one, two tons per hour, three tons, depending on the engine size. Uh, and then we have also bilge water. Bilge water can contain anything in the engine room, uh, rust, dust, oils, chemicals, sewage leaks, seawater, whatever have you. Uh, this also needs to be treated by a separate water treatment unit, bilge water separator. Um, the two units, the water treatment units, belongs to different Marpool annexes. The EGR bead of water belongs to the uh, Annex 6. Uh, and bilge water to Annex 1, but the discharge requirement for both these waste streams are 15 ppm, needs to be monitored by an approved oil content meter. So when we saw these requirements, we thought, all right, if we have the same discharge requirement, we have the same monitoring equipment, why not combine these two treatment units into one? Uh, so we started a collaboration with MAN, we went to their test bench in Copenhagen, where they could supply us with prime EGR bleed of water from the test bench. Uh, we did a lot of testing, uh, found that this water can be quite effectively treated uh, well below these limits. So we took this concept to DNVGL and uh, they were, I have to give them credit, they were very uh, good in their dialogue and uh, given the certain conditions we were allowed to combine these two waste streams in one machine. Uh, just short technically, this needs 
as they belong to various uh, more pool regulations, we need to segregate these two waste streams. You have the EGR bleeding off to a drain tank. Sorry? No, there was just a feedback, I'm afraid, of somebody who just joined. All right. Yeah. Sorry. All right. So the, the bleed off coming from the engine is coming to the drain tank, whereas the bilge water is accumulated in the bilge water holding tank. Because there are diff different annexes, we cannot mix the sludge that generated the, the byproduct. So we have an oily sludge tank for annex one and we have the EGR sludge tank for annex six. But then we have a combined water treatment unit or a bilge water separator that draws suction from either a bilge tank through three way valves. Return, returning it to the beach tank if required and returning it to the oily waste tank for the sludge. If you need to discharge the EGR drain, uh, you have to select this on the switch on the unit and it will recirculate the water so that the suction is from the EGR drain tank. The requirement from DNV is that we do not mix these waste streams, but they have agreed to if we uh, if we change the volume of the separator twice, it is regarded as segregated. Uh, so we discharge this overboard through a white box. Just briefly, a white box is a locked cabinet where you keep the control and measuring systems for mainly bilge water. It's, it's one of the Exxon requirements, uh, but it's also on most US calling ships to, to keep the crew uh, having all the, the necessary data for the bilge water discharge, such as time position, valves position, oil content, flows, whatever whatever um, signals you need to display to the port state control officer. Um, so everything is locked up to control the, the crew from being accused of magic pipes. But here we also get to segregate the discharge volumes because you have one oil record book that you need to fill out for the discharge of bilge water and you have an EGR record book. So we keep this segregated in this white box. So this way we can treat uh, these two waste streams by one machine instead of having two separate machines. So what's required is a uh, segregated tanks. You need these three-way valves. You need uh, separated sludge tanks and a white box to record and monitor everything, uh, including your data for your record books. So this is uh, a new way of thinking, and it's something that most stakeholders in our business will benefit from. The, the engine makers and shipyards, obviously, more capex-oriented. Uh, whereas owners and ship uh, managers, uh, the crew has to do less training. It's one technology to learn and operate. There's less service, of course, having one machine to two. Uh, documentation, certification, calibration is done on one unit. There's less space requirements. One unit takes less space than two. Um, importantly, also there's zero standstill problems. If you have an EGR water treatment unit and a vessel out of these areas for months, and then you have to start the unit when you enter an eco area, uh, giving the crew stress for having to start a, a unit that's been standing still for some time, perhaps of different technology. So I think for the crew, this will be something that will be quite welcomed to have an oil water separator they are familiar with, they are, they are um, happy to use and, and feel confident in using. Um, so um, there are a lot of, of uh, added values here for, for Many. So, in short, of course, less capex for shipyards mainly, uh, opex for managers, uh, owners, but it's less equipment, less equipment, which provides more space on board, less requirement for training and documentation, and there's less environmental impact. And we're just simply making the whole ship more efficient and doing this by removing equipment. So, I hope this is something that will be um, appreciated in the business, and I hope that we can set a trend that more companies can think this way. We are thinking of even including black and gray water treatment in a future unit, so uh, reducing even more uh, more equipment. However, that's a longer walk to walk because it's a different uh, effluent measurement requirements. Here we have the same oil content meter requirements, so it's easier. So uh, thank you, and that was it. Uh, any questions, I would be more than happy to, to answer. Well, very well delivered, Martin. Thank you. I really appreciate it. We've got time now to do that. Um, so my question, if you could stop sharing your screen so I can see the faces and I can see the body language of our audience. Thank you. Um, my question is immediate. Uh, port state control, uh, they are not educated to see such a sophisticated unit. Are they going to kill us when we start saying that, hey, we can do this magic thing and they will say, what's going on here? 
Well, my, my experience from, from port sea control, it can be quite a stressful situation. Uh, it's all about that the crew feels confident, well-trained and, and they know what they're doing. So just having one technology instead of two will, will simplify the port state control and the white box is also key here that you have all the data you need to show them and you can you can demonstrate that you've been compliant. So I think this is this it will be uh, making the port state control easier actually. But I, I hear that you are saying will, will. Uh, can you say that you have already achieved something? Have you installed anything? Oh, Any sorry. Experience? Okay, yeah. Well, this was approved uh, earlier this year. We have uh, we have started to deliver. These systems are only for new builds, so these are now uh, heading to yards. So we haven't really we haven't come to that point yet. But I believe in the last part of this year and early next year, these units will be started. So there's a time delay because these rules started to apply uh, January this year, and and uh, and uh, the deliveries will be a sort of a time delay. But yes, we have systems going out. Yes. And I've noticed in your presentation you are only talking MAN, but our members have Zulzers, for example, the pill sticks maybe or whatever. So what about those ones? Well, it it's doesn't, uh, we, we work with MAN, but we're not uh, in any way connected to them. So we can do this on a WinGD engine or any engine with an EGR system that produces this uh, bleed of water. Okay, Thank, thanks, Martin. That's all my notes. Actually, I'm looking for the yellow hand anywhere. Um, no, nothing. This presentation will be included in my my. Oh no, there is a and yes, Karsten, please. You're muted. Hi. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. Um, quite interesting on this one. The only thing I have. How does it work with regard to uh, uh, service on those those things? Uh, how is your service network? Because this is one of the problems actually which we are encountering more and more. Can you say some words to this? Well, absolutely. We uh, we have uh, service networks. Uh, Alex, or having I don't know how many service engineers you have, Alex. Quite a few for we US. Have, uh, yeah, we have five here that travel the globe, and we have uh, service contractors in uh, Sydney, Australia, in Brisbane. And because of the pandemic, we actually just brought one on board um, just outside of Limassol. And Marine Flock has another, other networks as well. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's interesting. It, it's a really good question because um, we have a, a skeletal crew in our office, and our technical director and one of the service engineers is doing a remote preventive maintenance inspection on the oily water separators with one of our clients because we couldn't get on board. So using Teams and video, and they're actually having a two-hour discussion going through it and doing some training and helping the crew do preventive maintenance with our guidance. Great. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So presentation will be included. in. So Martin, don't forget to send it over to me, okay? Remember, because I'll, you may hold me back. Okay. Um, we've got five minutes. So I'm opening the floor. Maybe anything, any other questions? before the guillotine comes at 1500. Nothing, well. Can I just say, Kuba, can I just say, um, uh, all of the associate members with um, products such as uh, Martin's uh, there, uh, please, Columbia and Bernard Schulter have a procurement platform called GemPro, which is one of the market, market leading procurement platforms. GemPro, I know, uh, and, and contact Dirk uh, for the contact details of uh, George Vassiliadis, who is the MD of GemPro, would be very keen to speak to all of the uh, associate members if they want their products and services considered on that procurement platform. You know, let's, uh, you know, this is again collegiate. Let, let's uh, make something of this association. So please, if you want to uh, contact George, go through uh, Dirk, Dirk will, or, or in fact, Jeroen uh, uh, will give you uh, the contact details and we'd be, uh, I know GemPro would look at the services uh, very favorably to see whether they comply with the requirements of, uh, of GemPro. And the second point I wanted to make is again for our associate membership, so I'm, I'm focusing on associate membership, is uh, my understanding, and I am a, 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 a techno technological um, Neanderthal, but my understanding is that there is a vlog on the uh, Intermanager website for all of the members and, and all of the associate members to put a, a short vlog 
whatever that might be, uh, of your services. So please do that too, because again, if we're looking for just the sort of product that, that Martin was talking about, it's very, very useful to go on the InterManager website and, and, and click on the vlog and, and get to hear a presentation such as this or whatever it might be, whether it's from mental health or or, or, or this or, or whatever. So I think we, let's, let's really use this as a networking um, platform as well as um, uh, something obviously much more than that. Great. Very good, very good. Okay, I'm more than happy to close it three minutes before time then. Uh, plenty of work. Thank you very much. And I'm waiting, impatiently waiting for more agenda points for a meeting in two weeks' time. I do have few already, but there is space. So whatever agenda point you would like to discuss, as you can see, it's okay, fast paced, but we keep to the time. This is the forum for all of us. So don't be shy. Come back to me. And we'll get it on, on, on next agenda point. And so, Kuba, you'll you'll go out with a with a minute with a written minute. Will you just on those points such as points of contact, uh, communication, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that we made so that, that we have that. I think the sooner that we have that, the the better because I think this it will work if we have these points of contact. It won't if if we, if we don't. Correct. Now the minutes will be with you today. My backlog is usually waiting for the upload from this video conferencing now. It takes some time to upload. But as soon as I've got it, the link will be there in the minutes, action points, maybe not minutes because I wasn't minuting. I just took the action points for me and I will go back with them. Thank you, everyone, and see you in two weeks' time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Paul. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.